for the United States women's national team. It's going to, it's going to be a big one. It, it's an important year. I mean, this is the year of preparation ahead of the 2023 world cup, which will take place uh, hosted by Australia and New Zealand. And with most things for the United States women's national team on the schedule, they'll likely kick things off with a January camp and then roll into a, she believes cup in early 2022, typically February, early March, a four team round Robin style tournament. Uh, it's been around for six years. The United States have won it already four times started in 2016. It was England, France, Germany, and then United States, Brazil and Japan then joined along with Spain and Argentina in Canada. And there's always been a little bit of rotation in terms of the clubs because it got started as that type of tournament. They wanted this tournament to be something in place for the United States women's national team to have a competitive fixture like this against other top tier teams. And it also included other fun events like the She Believes Summit, which includes, you know, panels, chats, breakout rooms, uh, speakers from the STEM industry to professional athletes, all about empowering young women. Um, and I love She Believes Cup. It, it, uh, it, it was sort of this kind of baby thing that started with mm -hmm. uh, Lauren Holiday, and it has just sort of manifested into this annual event. And like most things for United States, United States Women's National Team, when they look at the year ahead, this is one of the the, the top things that, that occur in the, the top half of the year. Yeah, it's really the first event of 2022 for the United States Women's National Team. Uh, they have the January camp, which we're going to get into, but it's the first time to face competition and it prepares them for the year that they have ahead of them, whether it's Olympic qualifiers in the past or what will be World Cup qualifiers in 2022. It's it sets the stage and it's a chance to kind of uh, have younger players that came into January camp get minutes and actually see game experience, not just in scrimmages at camps and in training. Um, against other United States players, but to face international competition. Because for some players that get called up for camps in January, it's their first time facing big international competition. And the She Believes Cup is big. It's a big deal when you win it. Um, it it's fun to attend. It's really the whole culture around it, like you said, with the summit and and She Believes and empowering young women and then a, a chance for young women's national team players to make their mark, get a first cap if they will, get some first goals with the national team. So it's big. And that's that's how the 2022 year will start for the United States women's national team. It's, it's a big year, right? I mean, uh, we talked about it, like World Cup qualifiers coming and with the World Cup in 2023, this is a big establishing year for the United States women's national team and for Vlako Andonovsky. I think that's a, a key word, right? That should be when we're looking at power words, making a word cloud, I think, for this year. I think that is the main word uh, the, to focus in on because it sort of rolls out of that January camp, right? And I think that first early competition maybe gives a little bit of a deeper insight and look into who is really making impacts in those training environments, in those camps with the U S with the U S women's national team. Uh, because if you get called into a tournament, like she believes cup, chances are you are probably coming off of a pretty Im impressive, uh, training camp. So, uh, in the January camp. So I'm, I'm looking forward. I like that those team, those two things mm -hmm. sort of kind of go with each other. They, they roll out, uh, you know, adjacent to, to one another. So, uh, I'm going to be looking at uh, the next bit of information, but this kind of gets broken down into maybe two parts because there are World Cup qualifiers that are going to be taking place in 2022, and they do kick off in January. However, the United States Women's National Team and Team Canada have straight buys into the CONCACAF Women's Championship, which will take place in July of 2022. So what is going to be occurring in January of 2022, and all of our great listeners can catch these games on Paramount Plus because CBS has the broadcast rights to them. Uh, the January qualifiers for CONCACAF will be for the other nations to participate alongside the United States and Canada in the CONCACAF Women's Championship because that tournament that, take pla that takes place in uh, July is two groups of four teams. So you have eight total national teams mm -hmm. competing for spots in 
the World Cup. Uh, so the top two teams advanced to a knockout stage and two other teams joined them in sort of a semifinal uh, format. And then there's a final four to lift the, the trophy, right, of the CONCACAF Women's Championship qualifiers. Uh, but all of these, again, all of these things sort of bleeding into one another a little bit. So even though there's going to be a CONCACAF qualifiers that doesn't include U.S. and Canada in January, there is going to be the big one in July 2022 that sort of centers in on those eight teams. And we're excited to cover that here on Attacking Third as well. Oh, we are very, very excited for that. And and these qualifying games, um, I don't I, I don't know if it's good or bad that the United States already qualifies for the, the women's championship because I think those extra games could have been really good and useful for the United States. And I know that Flacco and Danofsky will schedule friendlies and they'll have plenty of training and they will be prepared. But for other teams that will play rounds and rounds of, of qualifying games leading up to that championship, that's really big for those teams. And because we're looking at um, potentially a different roster in 2022 for the United States women's national team, it could be a chance for them to get good opportunities because the team, Sandra, that goes to the CONCACAF Women's Championship and, and qualifies for the World Cup, that roster we will see in 2023 at the at the Women's World Cup. Um, so it's a huge year, establishing year. We're going to keep throwing that word out there because <laughs> It is, and it is here for this team. I uh, I know we're talking about this, so not so much in a chronological order, but mostly just big events, big key events that we know are going to be taking place for this United States Women's National Team in 2022, and that is going to include this massive January camp. Uh, January camp is a senior women's national team camp that is held every January, right? It's been held for, for many, many years. And uh, I think maybe it's a good idea before we hop into our next segment, Lisa, to maybe give listeners a, a 101, right? It definitely is because um, for those that don't know, this January camp is really like the epitome and the peak of the United States women's national team. It happens at the beginning of the year. It's an extended training camp. It gathers uh, a big group, one of the biggest groups of training camps that we will see from the United States throughout the year, uh, 24 to 30 players. There can be a lot. Um, it, it's extensive training. It's hard work. They train two times a day. It is very very, very competitive. And as we've echoed, I sound like a broken record right now, but because it's a World Cup qualifying year, the people that are called into this camp are being directly looked at to be on the World Cup team for the United States. Um, but because it's so competitive and it's highly intense training with fitness levels and hardworking sessions, it's and because they call in such a high number of players and such a big roster, it really allows U.S coaches to look at different players, put them in different positions, move formations around, try new things, try players like Margaret Purse from a forward to an outside back on the left to the right to switching her up in the middle of the game and seeing if that can happen. You see so many different things happening at this January camp. Um, and it's, it's really such a prestigious camp. I'm going to say as, as a young soccer player, if you get called into the January camp, it is very promising that you can make an impact on the U S coaches and it could really launch your career. We saw that happen with uh, then Julie Johnson, who, who is Julie Ertz, as we know now as a superstar on the team, Mallory Pugh in, in 2016, she got her first camp with the senior team uh, in this January camp. And then we saw her go into the She Believes Cup um, and and play, get her first cap. And now we know where Mallory Pugh stands with the team. But this is really a launching off point for a lot of players. There's a lot of hype that surrounds it um, because – Coaches are looking at you. It's a direct call out. And it means so much more than the friendlies that happened in 2021 after the Olympics. Um, uh, although those rosters, they, they might play a part in this January camp uh, heading into it. But just a big camp, honestly. Yeah, no, and I love that it's an annual event. I mean, we're, you're talking over a decade of of uh January camps that have been in place since uh, 2009, like you had mentioned. And I also love that it's always – uh, an expanded uh, mm -hmm. camp as well in terms of the roster because so often whenever this team does get together for friendlies during international windows and things like that, it's always a very specific range, right? There's always maybe like a 20 to 23 player uh, roster that is named and then come those game days, it's really only about 18 to 20 who are able to 
you know, dress for those potential friendlies that take place during the international windows. So that's the other side of that, that, that angle that comes into play when we're looking at this January camp is it still has all of those same high intensity, high level competitive type of angles that come into play for this camp, but it's expanded to a larger player pool. And I know that that's always a bit of excitement for people whenever those rosters drop. And that excites us here too. 